Am I the a-hole for not meeting my dying father? I have absolutely no contact with my parents. I don't talk to them. I don't visit them. To be honest, I'd rather never see them again in my life. This might sound bad, but I do have my reasons. I was kicked out of my parents' house the day after my 18th birthday. My father claimed that an 18-year-old is already an adult and they should be able to live by themselves. Just a heads up, I was still in high school when that took place. I worked part-time but I couldn't afford housing. I slept on the streets for about a few weeks until I found a shelter. Not only that, but I had too many rough days after that. The streets are no place for anyone, especially someone that young. Through the help of some NGOs, I managed to finish school, get into a technical course for programming and get a decent job. Now, 10 years after that, I just graduated college. I saved up to actually do that. However, I can't forgive my parents. I never contacted them and they didn't contact me. That was until yesterday. Somehow my family, uncle, got my phone contact and sent me a message. My father is extremely sick and it is likely that he might pass away in the next few days. My uncle told me that my father wanted to see me one last time and ask if I could go there. I said I would not go. I absolutely resent and bear a grudge against my father and mother. He kicked me out, and she did absolutely nothing to stop it. As you might assume, my uncle started to get heated and called me heartless, ungrateful and an a-hole among other things, and I'm pretty sure most of my family feels the same way about me. Honestly, I'm only asking here for my sanity's sake. I will not be meeting them, but I understand that the man is dying, and by not going, I'm denying something to a dying man, which might make me an a-hole. However, even if it does, I do not care. I'd rather be in a home than see those two ever again. Now for the top comments. He's an adult. He's old enough to die on his own. F your uncle and F your dad. Not a home. And where was this uncle when your parents threw you out? Did he stand up for you against your parents then? Honestly, where was anyone of Opie's family? Let's be honest. They probably have no clue what happened and were told an alternate reality from the parents. Came here to say this. The parents probably lied and said he left on his own and went no contact. Opie, you're not day hall. Not day hall. The day he kicked you out is the day you were no longer his child. And just because he's dying does not mean you have to forgive him for what he did. You have every right to not visit him. And he's most likely not gonna apologize and try to justify what he did. He'd probably try to take credit. If I hadn't put you in the streets, you never would have developed the initiative and work ethic to succeed. Now change my bad pen. This. Now change my bad pen. He's only doing this for himself and maybe have a good slash better image. I know what I did was wrong but I'm asking for forgiveness type of thing. And if he wasn't dying, he would have never tried to reach out to OB. 100% not the a-hole but I'm a bit of a vindictive witch at times. So I'd visit, just once, to tell your dad that you wanted to check that he's actually dying and will never forgive him and that you hope this hunts him until his last breath. Earth scorched and salted. But you may need therapy if you go this route. In fact, you may need therapy regardless. Good luck, Opie, and look after yourself. I like your style. Personally, I thought that there would be many nights when things were awful and Opie may have retained hope his parents would regret their decision and help him by taking him out of the hellish situation he was in. So, one, I'd vacillate over the not going, maybe and maybe not, until I heard he was really sick. Two, then agree to go and cancel a few times to get their hopes up. Three, and when they were about to figure out, say, for sure going today at X. Four, call from on the way there and ask to be in speakerphone so dad and mom could hear my voice. 5. Then tell them, for many nights I had false hopes you would regret kicking me out, and be kind, find me and offer help. But you never did. I wanted you to know the feeling of that hope being ripped away before you died. I never intend to visit. 6. And maybe laugh. But maybe that's a tad much. Next story. Am I a hall for being honest with my parents about my childhood? I-24 female was poor growing up. We had to rough it throughout my childhood and teenage years. College was funded solely by scholarships and awful part-time jobs. I don't hold any resentment towards my parents over this, but it was hard at a time. I think I would still be struggling now had things been different. I met my partner, 31 male, during my sophomore year and we've been together for just under 5 years. His family was in the exact opposite financial situation as mine. He has an established position in his father's company. He has since we met and works remotely. 
Since my graduation in May, we've spent almost the entire summer with his parents, sightseeing and bouncing around to their different vacation homes. It was such a wonderful experience. I never thought I'd experience something like that, but the adjustment was easier than I expected. As we headed back home this week, we stopped by to visit my parents, 45 female and 47 male. While there, I mentioned that this summer felt like what all the summer breaks of my childhood should have been, and how excited I was for the future when my partner and I have children and can give them this treatment. My mother apparently took incredible offense to what I had said, and said they had done the best they could for me as a child. I replied that I never claimed any differently. The argument ended with us still not seeing eye to eye and my husband and I made an early departure than we had been planning on, thanks to the tension in the house that remained. Am I the a-hole? You're the a-hole. You can be honest about your childhood by saying you were poor. Saying my childhood should have been like this when your parents didn't choose to be poor is a huge a-hole move. It was just so easy to adjust. Someone please take the silver spoon out of Opie's mouth. You're the a-hole and ungrateful. Not everybody marries rich. Your parents loved you despite you draining their income, didn't they? I'm sure they would have had a more lavish lifestyle without having to raise you, but they did the best they could for you. Damn, imagine treating your own parents like this. I will never understand how people can be like this. The only thought in my mind is getting to a situation where I can do things for my mother who did her best with three children after a nasty divorce. We didn't have the picture-perfect childhood, but she did her best to provide for us. And we had it better than most people would have in our situation. And the only thought in my mind is, how am I ever going to be able to repay my mother? You're the a-hole. What your summer breaks should have been? How utterly insensitive and hurtful. Your parents didn't choose to be poor. No one does. It's shocking that you don't see how unkind what you said was. Not just insensitive, but entitled as heck. Summer break should be a time kids get a break from school. And that's about it. The vast, vast majority of people never jet off anywhere. I know mine were more like trips to the lake to swim or maybe camping. We got on a plane for a trip maybe twice before my 18th birthday and my family was nowhere close to poor. For someone raised with very little, Opie sounds spoiled as heck. No kidding. My family was solidly middle class, but we surely didn't have elaborate vacations while I was growing up. And that certainly doesn't mean I was deprived or we were poor. Something tells me Opie is grossly exaggerating how poor she was growing up. More likely her family was working class or lower middle class. She needs to get over her entitlement. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not paying for my daughter to start yet another degree? My wife and I have three daughters. We always told them we would pay for their college tuitions provided they wanted to go. Our eldest, Hazel, graduated in 2018. She started at a four-year university and lasted there six months before dropping out and coming home. We had to eat a lot of fees because by that point, they were non-refundable. Her reason for dropping out was that she didn't want to pursue that major anymore. We told her she could switch to undecided or general studies until she did figure it out, but she insisted on dropping out. From there, she enrolled in a local community college which was cheaper, but as we didn't qualify for financial aid, we were paying for all of it. She stayed through till the world fell apart in 2020. She tried online schooling, but it was too hard and we respected that. Our younger two were struggling with virtual school. I can't imagine how hard college was. She took some time off, then in January of this year, started at another four-year college. Keep in mind, only some of her credits transferred, but we were supportive. Last month, she came to us and said she wants to drop out yet again and go to cosmetology school. I have nothing against that. But after spending tens of thousands of dollars on these other schools, she's got to pay her own way on this one. I told her if she finishes and gets her license, I will reimburse her. But she needs to figure out how to finance it on her own. She asked how she's supposed to do that, and I told her to get a job. She got upset and said I'm going back on my word. It doesn't help that this year our middle daughter graduated, and we're paying for her to go to a four-year college. Hazel said this isn't fair. And I said I'd do the same to her sister if she was as wishy-washy. Now, Hazel won't talk to me. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. You've given her a chance and a backup. There comes a time when we all have to stand on our own two feet. Would Hazel qualify for an apprenticeship? Those aren't a thing around here. Cosmetology school is certainly cheaper than a four-year school. Why not determine how much she would have cost at her four-year school, and if she has it hit there, offer the rest as a kind of education budget? 
she's more than hit what a four-year school would be. Not today, Ho. You've paid for three false starts. She can pay for the rest. And they're willing to compensate her if she finishes. That's a better deal than I ever got. Totally agree. She has to learn to finish what she starts. She'll just do this again if Opie agrees to her demands. Not today, Ho. You did pay. Twice already. She has a pattern of not finishing what she starts. I wouldn't want to pay for a third shot either. You didn't say, I'll pay all schooling for all time, no matter how many different paths you take, and she shouldn't pretend that you did. You're right that if she's serious about this, she'll pay for it since she's now been given reassurance. You'll reimburse her if she finishes. You're still offering to pay, but only after she shows she's serious about it and has completed it, not before her. You're being more generous than I would be at that point. You still have two other kids to pay for, and maybe she'll finally understand how generous you've been if she has to foot the bill for once. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for cutting my daughter's financial support off and monitoring every cent she spends? I'm so livid right now about the entire situation that I can't see straight and make a fair judgment. My daughter is heading off to college this year. I and my wife both decided years ago that if slash when she went to college, we did not want her working to support herself. Well, now that time has come, and we've been working on ways to make sure she can fully focus on her education. I and my wife budgeted out a monthly allowance for her, along with her tuition payments. A big part of this is that I want to also teach her to budget out her money and figure out how to handle her own purchasing. While she was still going to live at home while she went to school, and it was made clear that though she could still eat with us and use some of our stuff, we expect her to start buying her own necessities and prepare her food. We also cut back on our grocery bill to an appropriate amount to only cover I, my wife and our other child. We decided this would take effect in June, and made sure for months that she would be ready for it. We taught her how to balance a checkbook, income versus expenses, the basics of cooking, etc. To say the first month was a disaster is an understatement. Within only 11 days, she had blown through her entire monthly allowance. This was not an insignificant amount either. We gave her $1,000 and she blew through it in 11 days. She does not pay any rent, utilities, health insurance, etc. She had no clue how she blew through that much money, but I figured it out incredibly quickly. She spent $500 alone eating out. $300 at Walmart and who knows what, and the rest on gas somehow. Again, in a car she does not pay for at all. She then asked if it would be possible to increase the amount of money she was being given. I lost it. I held nothing back and told her there was no way in hell this was going to happen again. The experiment was over, and there was no way I was going to give her a single cent of unsupervised money. We spent months teaching her, and I mean literally every weekend I was teaching her how to be a responsible adult. I told her that I was the most disappointed in her I have ever been at that moment, and she knows I feel I have failed as a parent. We are not rich. Never have been. $500 out of every one of my paychecks is a very, very noticeable amount. I've been monitoring her like a hawk ever since. I give her no more than $20 cash, and if she ever wants to use her card, she needs to tell me the exact amount so I can transfer it over. This has not been easy and has caused strain in our relationship. I just tell her now she can get a job if she wants, because then at least it's her own money. Now though, I'm getting backlash from extended family who have learned what's going on. My wife is in firm agreement, but now I'm second-guessing myself. Edit, the amount of money I gave her is rightfully being looked at. It was way too much, and I think I realized that probably soon after she spent it all. My budgeting, in my mind, was $300 for groceries, $200 for other essential purchases, $200 for gas, and $300 for school-related purchases slash surplus money. I overshot but didn't care because I thought whatever she had left over could go into savings, and she could have a good chunk of savings just in case. What this has taught me is that I've taken this personally and allowed myself to become nihilistic towards my daughter. Her attitude set this all off, and I feel that is truly what I could not forgive about this. My parents never would have dreamed to do this with me, so when she spends $120 at a steakhouse paying for her friends, when we have not gone out to a steakhouse like that pretty much ever as a family, I felt disrespected that she dared ask for more money. I was naive to give her $1,000 like this, or to really expect that this adulting experiment would have worked out. Gonna step back and rethink what my priorities should actually be and what I need to take away from this all. I have to say, you're the a-hole. 
You waiting until your daughter was 18 and half years old to start teaching her any kind of basic adult life skills? No freaking wonder she's not good at it. If you wanted her to be a plug-and-play functioning adult, you should have started years ago. You only have yourself to blame for this. Also, one failure and then you conclude she'll never learn? Not if she isn't given the chance to learn. Was she stupid with her money? Yes. But then she needs to feel the consequences of not being able to do anything or go anywhere because she can't afford it for the next 20 days. I'm not saying give her more money, but you basically showed her swimming videos, then dropped her at the deep end of a pool, and when she struggled, you scolded her, pulled her out, and forbade her from ever going to the pool again. Micromanaging is teaching her nothing but resentment. Exactly. She's never had a chance to actually spend money on her own. They should have started sooner and with a smaller budget. She has to learn by doing. Otherwise, she's going to have zero control over her financial habits when she's on her own. Everyone sucks here. It was first month and she did a big screw-up, yes. But if she's only allowed to screw up once, you're setting her up for failure. This. Also, did they brought her to food shopping before all of this? Does she know how to cook at all? If the answer to both questions is no, no wonder she went on to grab food from takeout. She probably doesn't know how to manage stuff. And while she can't be totally excused, this is a good time to teach her how to do those stuff. Opie's response is way too extreme and will not teach the kid to be responsible with money and can in the long term prepare the kid to be financially mistreated under someone else's. Because the thought is, I am not responsible enough with money and I need to be under the supervision of someone